God, this is proper dangerous, isn't it? Look, that plane's on fire, look. Is it broken? I'm done. I'm done. Hello and welcome to the biggest ever episode of the Epic Car Show. In today's video, we're here at Gatwick Aviation Museum. Not to clean a car, no. We're here to tackle something a little bit bigger. We are gonna be cleaning a 1955 Avro Shackleton. And if you don't know what that is, take a look at this. It's time to fold up your tray table, lift up your window blind, and buckle up for the biggest ever clean in the show's history. And we had just eight hours to do the impossible task of bringing this plane back to its best. So I needed help from the most experienced cleaners in the business. But sadly, they were busy. So I recruited my Uncle Chris who loves window cleaning and my dad who loves aeroplanes. So with my hard work and determination, Uncle Chris's window cleaning equipment and dad's pointless knowledge on jumbo jets, we made the ultimate trio when cleaning gigantic things such as this aircraft, there has to be a solid plan of action. So, me being the cleaning expert that I am, I already have one in place. I don't know. I really don't know. Well, we're going to try and go top down anyway at least, but it's not like cleaning a car, is it? After crying to myself for several minutes, I got the team together and we started to figure out key areas that needed the most attention. So the left hand side of the aircraft is completely different to the right hand side because on this side we have to deal with all the mould but on the other side it's completely faded. And it wasn't just the mouldy body that we had to contend with, we had another problem being the sheer height of it. And the size of these tails is absolutely incredible as you can see they are humongous. We've got to be super careful today but we have got cranes, we've got steps, we've got everything you can imagine to make sure that this job goes as smoothly as possible. Oh yes, smoothly as possible. Good one Dave. And one thing the staff forgot to mention was these cranes weighed about the same as 20 elephants. And to top it off they all had flat tyres. So I think we have got a work cut out today. This is going to be most definitely one of the hardest things we've ever cleaned. With the inspection complete, it's time to get cracking with this aircraft. So we had to get the hoses connected up to the filtered water tanks in Chris's van. And thankfully we had an additional outside tap in the middle of the field. So it gave me chance to unleash my secret weapon. Check this out. This is a world exclusive. It's a battery powered commercial pressure washer from Karcher. This thing is incredible. I can run it anywhere, including a build with a giant aeroplane in, and I don't need to rely on power because I've got two lithium ion batteries. And these things, they're pretty epic. They're very heavy, and I can get about half an hour out of it. And it doesn't sound a lot, but when you're cleaning a car, you don't have a machine on really for any longer than half an hour. This, however, is a giant aircraft. The main thing is we are just going to snow foam it, so we're not going to be power blasting it. We're just going to be giving it a nice gentle bath. Once we all got set up, we could make a start from the back of the plane, which could only mean one thing. It was time to climb the ladder of death. It's terrifying, isn't it? I'm absolutely bricking it. I reckon, Dad, you'll be fine here. Just don't rock it. Oh my God, this is proper dangerous, isn't it? Please don't fall backwards, Dad. It's so wobbly. Oh my God, that went then. I'm so scared. At such a worrying time like this, I needed some inspirational words from my father. Dad, will you shut up? It's all right for you down there. Look how high I am. It's not exactly the easiest thing in the world. I'm like 50 foot in the bloody air. I'm higher than that jumbo jet over there. This is difficult. It's better than it was, that's our motto. After brushing the tail, we tried a new tactic. We've just layered a little bit of snow foam on. What that's gonna do is now pull off all that dirt and all that mold. So after a couple of minutes, I'm gonna be ready to blast it off. But before I do, I've just got to change my pants. The fin was starting to look pretty good. So we could then move on to the next part of the tail, which meant moving the world's heaviest crane. Put your back into it, Dad, come on. <laughs> I moved it. Give me a hand. 
Yeah, right, 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 son. Like I'm holding my phone. Three, two, one. But the problem we faced with this plane was not being able to pressure wash much of it, as the paint was flaking off on the upper sections, and at this point we were feeling like nothing could go wrong. But then... Ah! My hose! My foam cannon's fallen off! Is it broken? It just fell off! Thankfully the snow foam cannon survived, so we could continue. This is proper sketchy. And after a few hours of cleaning this plane, I came to the realisation that I was the only person doing some work. So I've tackled that, that's looking good. We're only like two hours into it. Dad's buggered off. Dad? I swear, if he's in here. What are you doing? Dad, we've got so much work to do. We have a whole flipping aircraft. And what are you doing in there anyway? Having a little look, it's very interesting in here. We've got so much work to do. Where's Uncle Chris now? Hi. He's on the loop. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's watching the in-flight entertainment. Look, this aircraft is live. Don't touch any switches, it says. So we had a five minute break and we soon discovered the museum left the key in the plane and nobody was watching. So Dad got to live his dream of becoming a pilot and he decided to take us for a flight around Crawley, which was thoroughly depressing. Still, it gave us chance to enjoy the in-flight food service, which mainly consisted of a bottle of water and a soggy Marmite sandwich, which was delightful as it was part of a meal deal which only cost us £40 each. With the toilet blocked up with sick, we could now land and get back to work. Because Dad spent most of the morning walking off to take pictures of planes, I had to teach him a lesson. I'm gonna keep my dad in check. Hey, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I'm getting wet now. Back to the clean, and the next part of the job was to tackle the body and the wing, which was totally safe, of course. We're brave in it here. Oh, God. Miss that step. Oh, my word. Oh, God, please be careful. You've got no fear. Yeah, but that's quite a height to fall. Since Dag was being so fearless, I decided to give him the responsibility of the foam cannon, which was a little silly of me. Oh. I'm standing down here, idiot. Why didn't you see me down there? I was standing there, I was like, don't phone me because I'm about to do a talking bit on the other camera. Brilliant, I'm soaked. After this serious incident, I put Chris in charge of the foam cannon and we cracked on with the rest of the plane. Eventually we made our way to the front which meant climbing up that wobbly ladder again and this mould was pretty stubborn so I needed to break out the giant toothbrush. So I think this brush is going to be a little bit easier but I am clinging on to dear life. It's terrifying. I'll be glad to be back on the ground. Oh god I thought we were tipping up then. Look at that shot of my van. I'm not going to lie, at this point I was wondering if we had bitten off more than we can chew. It was getting windier and colder, but then we saw something that would definitely warm us up. Oh my god, look, that plane's on fire, look. Look at that, that's actually on fire. You can see it clear as day. It turns out it was a practice plane for the firefighters, so we ignored it and carried on working. Well, I say we. My old man decided it would be a good idea to do a disappearing act just to take some more pictures instead. Buggering off while we're left to do the work. He's incredible, he really is. Come and do some work, Dad. We knew what he was up to and it didn't stop there either. Dad, why are you moving a picnic bench? Why are you doing that? Really, Dad? 
We've got a gigantic plane over there, and Chris is like doing all the work. Just, you, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. I'll put this stuff away. You carry on. We carried on with the wing, and to be honest, we were starting to struggle. It was half past three, and this was being filmed back in April, so the daylight still wasn't quite on our side. And the constant pulling and pushing of the cranes was becoming increasingly difficult. We really weren't sure that we were going to be able to finish this. You got foam all over your lips. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> Are you knackered? I, I'm all right. I can keep going. I'm all right. Nobody has tea breaks these days. I'm surprised they haven't made that illegal yet. Yep, let's do it. The left hand side wasn't as bad in terms of the algae, so we had a real fighting chance of making it to the finish line. That's lovely. But then I saw the top of the wing. Oh my God, look at the wing from here. I mean, that is just, that's so crushing. That really is. If you look over there, look at it. It was one of those moments where you get carried away and you think you're done, but then you forget that one giant piece of the puzzle and it just sucks all the energy out of you. But still we carried on, and mind you, towards the rear of the plane, we were quite lucky because that wasn't too bad, so it made up for it in the end. So we gave it absolutely everything and we had one more final push as we could sense victory was upon us. The Anorak on the other hand heard the sound of 280,000 pounds of thrusts coming from a Trent 900 Rolls-Royce engine from an Emirates Airbus A380. Wait a minute, I'm turning into my dad. One thing I'm sure some of you might ask is how much those telescopic poles were and trust me, I was as shocked as you'll be when you hear this. Are these expensive, Chris? A hundred? No. No way. No way. Still, at least it was cheaper than the battery-powered pressure washer, which cost £1,700. And that's before you chuck in the batteries and the charger. The batteries cost £190 each, and we had four of them. Wow, that was tough. That was really, really tough. This had been one heck of a journey. From the moment we arrived, right to the very end, we gave it absolutely everything. Well, some of us did. But joking aside, we had the most ridiculous task ever, and we nearly said no because we didn't think it would be possible to achieve. And we did have fun, but we were all physically and mentally exhausted. But it just goes to show you what you can achieve in one day if you give it absolutely everything. What a day, what a day. This is one of those what on earth were you thinking moments. 